your water pot. Verse 25 in John 4 reads, The woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Smart woman. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with this woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou? Or why do you talk with her? The woman then, after that, left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to men, Come and see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. The word of God tells us that Jesus departs from Judea here in this, this particular time, but he had a, return, a determined heart, the Lord did. And, and in his mind, it was fixed on the land of Samaria back then, all right? Now, you have to understand something here, that the custom of the Jews was to avoid at any cost uh, any conversation, any contact with the Samaritans, and vice versa. The Samaritans would avoid the Jews back then also. So there was conflict back then in the Middle East. Uh, interesting enough that even today, 2,000 years later, relationships aren't any better. They're still disagreeing. They're still fighting. There's still hostility. There's still hatred. There's still all of that going on in the Middle East against Israel and the Jewish people. Once there, he comes upon this well that is known as Jacob's well. Uh, something remarkable takes place. He met up with this woman, and she was looking for a drink of water, physical drink of water. He was thirsty. She got more than she bargained for, you might say. So this woman did not only find the well, Jacob's well, but she found the creator of the well. Now, it had to be tough on this woman because you know how people are. They were judging her. They're going, why is he talking to this woman? It wasn't too much against Jesus. Like, hey, Jesus, you know, we don't want you talking to this woman. They weren't doing that. They were saying here, okay, they, they were saying, hey, woman, why is he talking to you? See, they were judging her already. But sometimes people do that today. I, I'm just grateful that God doesn't judge us by, you know, what we look like, what degree we have, or where part of the tracks we come from and all that stuff, you know. And it's no place for us to do because we're fearfully and wonderfully made, all of us. He didn't say some of us. So this woman was empty. But, okay, on her way to more than enough, to excess. She didn't know it. She was just going to get a drink of water. And at Jacob's well, her life gets changed, church. All right? She went from a spiritual drought and a physical drought to a spiritual overflow is what happened to her. This is what happens when you meet the master. She leaves her water pot. Mm. Now, we can't look at that seemingly insignificant because nothing in the Bible is ins insignificant, all right? Je well, she left her water pot, big deal. Let's move on to something else, right, my sister? You know, no, you can't just read the Bible that way. John took space in the scriptures to mention that. So we've got to figure out what went on here and what God is saying to us. There's a reason she left it. Why did she leave her water pot? Well, I came up with a few things, all right, that I think fits us today, all right? Number one point, why did she leave her water pot? Well, you ready? This is profound now. This is a revelation. This is like coming from the throne. You understand? Maybe she forgot it. The woman had something wonderful in her life that changed her life. Maybe that's why she forgot it. Maybe she was so consumed with meeting the Messiah that a water pot came insignificant. And they weren't back then. They were important. She came face to face. 
never dreamed that a simple trip for a glass of water would save her soul and give her more than enough. But I believe at this time in her life, she obviously forgot not only her water pot, but she forgot her past. Come on, church. She forgot everything that took place. She forgot all of her sins. She forgot all of the judgment and the condemnation that was on her. She forgot it. Amen. When the Lord becomes the Lord in your life, you and I forget things. You and I forgot so much of, you know, our past and all of our sins and what have you. This is what the Lord does to you, church. Number two. Maybe she didn't want any hindrances. My God, you ready? The book of Hebrews in chapter 12, verse 1, says lay aside every weight. Maybe she just wanted to lay aside that weight, church. The sin which easily beset you. But he didn't stop there. He said, now run the race with endurance. This woman was on a mission. You get a woman on a mission, you better get out of their way. She had a message to tell and no time to waste. This was the happiest day of her life. Her sins were forgiven. Don't get quiet on me now. Burdens lifted, sorrows erased. Her honor and dignity was restored, church. And the last thing she needed in her life was something to weigh her down. The last thing every born-again Christian needs in their life right now is something to weigh you down, to keep you from advancing in God. So there's no better time but now to leave our water pots behind. What's your water pot? Well... Your water pot can be anything that weighing you down. It can be pride, self-centeredness, me and I, you know. It, it, it can be hatred, a prejudice heart. Any of that can become a water pot that you need to leave behind, church. Let me throw in unforgiveness. And, and sometimes, you see, we, we say we, we forgave her. We forgive him, you know. But yet, inside of you is saying, you're lying through your teeth. You can't forgive him. You didn't forgive him. And the best way to forgive is be truthful with yourself. Because God never said, do it instantly. And sometimes things that have taken place in, in our lives, it is difficult to forgive. But you have to work at it. it you're better off working at it, okay, than just saying, I did and make him believe you did, and it didn't. Am I making sense here? Okay? Get truthful with God. Say, God, I can't let it go. It's hurting me. It's hurting me big time. I just can't release it. All right? And you get before God, and you be truthful. Because God's not going to deal with a lie. He's not going to come in and, you know, he's going to come in when you're truthful and say, good, my son, good, my daughter, let me help you now. Once that's done, I didn't say you have to go out to dinner with them and fellowship with them. You see, sometimes you're better off just staying your distance. That's up to you and your situation. So how about number three point here? Maybe she just thought Jesus needed it. He's been so good to me, you know. He's, he forgave me of my sins, my past, everything, gave me a new life. Let me at least give him a gift, a water pot. Water pots, again, were significant back then. After all, Jesus did ask her for a drink when you read John verse 7. He asked her for a drink. So maybe she figured, well, he could use this water pot. I have nothing to offer but a water pot. What can I give to God? Well, first of all, you give yourself to God. And this is how we think sometimes, church. All right? What do I have to offer? I can't sing. You know, I certainly can't preach. Nobody's asking you to. Can't play an instrument, you know. And it does not matter, okay, if you just give it to Jesus, whatever it is. Let me throw this in. You can tithe. Well, I can't this week. You can give something. It, it all goes back to why this lady left her water pot. Number four point. Maybe she took the well with her and didn't need the pot anymore. How could she pick up a water well? Because she had 
the well because it was well. She had the whole well, church. So on that note, I tell you this story. A wealthy father who had a beautiful daughter, all right, and it came to the time that he wanted to offer her hand in marriage. So he wanted to pick the perfect man for his daughter. What father doesn't want to do that today, you know? I mean, I thank God for my son-in-laws, even Jason. I really do. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. So what does he do? He sends out an invitation that, okay, was issued to all available bachelors in town. And here's how the invitation went. And he told them to report to his estate because he wanted to see who would fit his uh, conditions for to have the hand of marriage for his uh, daughter. So the invitation read, if you will answer this invitation, you will, will receive either $1 million in cash, every bachelor is there, okay, or 1,000 acres of land, or the hand of his beautiful daughter in marriage, and then everything he owns will be yours. Well, sounds like a win-win, not the end of the story. Well, the young men, men came from all over, all right? There was groups of them all over to discover one stipulation that wasn't mentioned in the invitation. It was in order to receive the prize or prizes, all right, someone had to swim the length of this certain pond, all right? Man, swimmies now, let's go, all right? And that seems simple, but the story doesn't end there. The pond was stocked by the father with the most deadly creatures known to man. Now all of a sudden the challenge became a little difficult. Such as alligators, water moccasins, sharks, piranhas, snakes. If that's me, all you had to do is put the snake in there. That was it, I wasn't going. You understand? Even though I know I got power to tread upon serpents. So the father wanted to be sure that he would find the man that had courage, that was tough, and he would protect his um, daughter. Everybody lined up by the pond. Crowds of men lined up by the pond. And he said, ready, set, go. Not one man jumped. That beautiful young lady, you're on your own, kid. What can I tell you? Father was brokenhearted and turned and walked away, and he was just totally surprised that they just wouldn't do it. Turns his back, and all of a sudden, he hears splash. There's a guy swimming his life away to get to the other side. I mean, he's booking, you understand? God wasn't even a good swim, swimmer, V, but he's swimming, you understand? And he makes it to the other side. He's all bloody, he's bit, he's this, he's that. He's all messed up, but he made it to the other side. So the father runs over to him and, you know, he says, oh my God, thank you, you know, bless your heart. You're the man for my daughter. What do you want? Ask me of anything he said I will give you he said I got one question who pushed me <laughs> so what am I saying here why does he even tell you the story too many Christians standing on the edge of the pond you see and we don't just have a water pot we've got the whole well and we're still standing on the edge of the pond and God's got so much more for us I don't really know why she left the pot, biblically speaking, all right? I just know what God gave me for us today. But when you meet the master, all right, you got to leave, here it goes, church, that water pot mentality. You got to leave that water pot mentality behind you. You got to leave that stinking thinking behind you.
You got to leave that God is only going to fill this little water pot in my life. Uh, when the Bible says that he wants to give you overflow. He said your cup overfloweth. Some of you are, 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 have a water pot relationship, you know. God's got the best for you, church. When God wants to give you the well, don't just settle for a water pot. Hello. Some of us have the water pot mentality on the job. Well, she's got four years of this and three years of that and two years of this, and I'm a high school grad, you know. That's water pot mentality. What you've got, if she or he don't, okay, you've got the Holy Ghost power. It's the best degree you can have. It's the HSU, Holy Spirit University. Some of us have water pot mentality when we give. We give and we don't cause it to press down, shake it together, running over. That's your seed. That's holy. That's God's. When you give, you make sure. You give unto the Lord that it comes back to you. It's not the reason you give. You give because the Bible just says to. God doesn't live in the water pot society. Jesus gave us authority, gave us dominion. God has an overflow for you and I and will spill it over into your family. I'm prophesying over somebody right now that your water pot must go and you must understand that you own the whole well. He said, I'm going to give you wells you didn't dig, houses you didn't build. Exchange your emptiness or your water pot mentality, all right, for overflowing of the well. Exchange your hurts for the well. The hurt is the water pot. The unforgiveness is the water pot. The weariness, the sickness, uh, that's all the water pot. When God's saying, I'm going to give you all of it, I'm going to give you the whole well. Come on, church. Some of you have been living on, on, on barely enough street. Time to move from there, mentally speaking, spiritually speaking. I know God's word brings success to all of you, then why don't I do it? See, listen to me. Success is God's word, watch this now, in your mouth. I'm going to wait back here for a minute. Success is God's word in your mouth. When you start speaking God's word, okay, you're going to start seeing better and greater things start to happen to you. Amen. Bless the Lord. You go out of here blessed. And know that you're highly favored and greatly loved. And remember, you are blessed. You are highly favored. And you are greatly loved. Go in peace. God bless you. We love you, church.